So welcome back students. We've already started with the inorganic series where I've explained you about or we have started with S block elements. I said we'll be doing S block in a nutshell quickly we'll finish the concepts and then start solving more number of multiple choice questions which are used for your exams. Right. So when after discussing the general properties of your alkali metals, let me come back to the important topic of lithium. Right. What is lithium? Lithium is the first element of your group 1 series that is lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium. So why actually we I already said group 1 group 2 or group 13 14 15 16 and 17 the first element of all the groups are the issue anomalous properties so let us see the, some important anomalies of uh, lithium so when I have to speak about lithium as I said the first important concept which you should study in terms of lithium what is it that is anomalous behavior of lithium compared to other alkali metals so other alkali metals are after lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium right why is it showing why is it different from others the first important concept is because of its smaller size right so whenever you speak about smaller size the concept which you should remember is immediately you need to relate that smaller size to polarizing power remember that what is that I already said the polarizing capacity the polarizing power is directly related to ionic charge this is what I said, right? And it is inversely related to ionic radius. This is what I already said. Then, second square of this. Then, so now to see if the I uh, this particular thing <coughs> directly related to ionic charge, and this depends again now upon the uh, atomic smaller size, isn't it? So because of this, right? Because of this concept, remember lithium forms which type of uh, this one charge it only forms plus one charge and plus one because again when it goes to plus two the ionization and that will become very high now tell me after i speak about smaller size what is the next concept when the size is smaller it obviously the amount of energy required to remove that electron is very very high so what will happen to the ionization enthalpy ionization enthalpy will be very high obviously it is understood right um, compared to others at the same time if i have to speak about electropositive nature so what is electropositive nature it is the ability to donate electrons so when i move from left to right in the periodic table they, it keeps on like uh, we, we already said alkali metals electropositivity decreases towards left to right Electronegativity increases, correct? Yes. Now tell me, electropositivity if I have to speak, electropositivity is basically ability to donate electrons, correct? Now in case of lithium, is because the size is very small, ionization enthalpy is very high. What will happen to the electropositivity of lithium? Electropositivity that is ability donating electrons will be very less because the size is very small. I need to apply a lot of energy to remove the electron. So ionization enthalpy is high. Hence the electropositivity is also low. So these are the important points which makes it different from remaining elements right so now if i have to speak about the similarities i already said lithium shows a diagonal relationship with magnesium right in what way are we saying this it is said there are certain properties which makes lithium as well as magnesium similar in nature so let us see those what are they when i have to speak about the physical state of lithium and magnesium both that means when i write both it means i'm talking about lithium i'm talking about magnesium also what are they both are hard in nature okay simple just for your information next reaction with water we very well know lithium combines with water magnesium also combines with water what do they form they going to form oxides as well as hydroxides both oxides and hydroxides this is only for your general information so oxides and hydroxides are insoluble in water remember that concept um, right so remember this why, why i'll tell you why are they insoluble so when we do questions insoluble but further if i have to take this hydroxides they further decompose we will do that reaction also as of now remember this Right. Now let us see the reaction with nitrogen. So when I have to speak about nitrogen, so lithium plus nitrogen here at the same time magnesium plus nitrogen. Simple. Now when I have to write, first let us write simple thing without LiN for this magnesium MgN. Right. So the valency of nitrogen is 3. Cross it. The valency of lithium is 1. Nothing to write. The valency of nitrogen is 3. The valency of magnesium is 2. 
left hand. Now, nitrogen here, uh, it is 2, isn't it? Right? So, try to write 2. Balance it. 3, 2 is a 6. So, 6 lithiums. Now, let's see nitrogen. Here, nitrogen is 2. Here, also nitrogen is 2. Now, magnesium is 3. Let us write magnesium 3. Correct. So, this is how you are going to form lithium nitride and magnesium nitride. Now, when I have to say about the formation of superoxides and peroxides, lithium as well as magnesium both will not further combine to form superoxides and peroxides. If, they, if you, you are given a question in the exam, so remember they will not form superoxides, they will not form superoxides or peroxides. Remember this concept, right? Yes. So now let's come back and see some more properties of lithium. That. So, we have spoken about the hydroxides, we spoke about oxides, we spoke about superoxides, we spoke about uh, peroxides also. Now, let's come back and speak about carbonates. If the question is given, simple as that. Just remember the concept, it's easy for us to apply. So, when I have to speak about carbonates, lithium combines with carbon dioxide forming carbonates. So, that carbonate is LiCO3 lithium carbonate right now when I have to speak about magnesium carbonate MgCO3 right so lithium carbonate when it dissociates correct so how does it dissociate uh, like uh, is there any mistake here let's see now lithium is plus one oxidation state carbonate is two minus two isn't it so Li2CO3 should be the uh, plus one magnesium is plus two carbonate is minus two so it's balanced now when this breaks out this breaks up into lithium oxide plus carbon dioxide magnesium carbonate when it dissociates it dissociates into magnesium oxide plus carbon dioxide why did i write lithium oxygen valency is minus 2 lithium is plus 1 correct magnesium valency is plus 2 oxygen is minus 2 it's correct now when i have to speak about chlorides right so now chlorides that is lithium chloride and magnesium chloride right so both the important property of this is they uh, are you know they're soluble they have covalent character in them you not know, the ionic character remember they have covalent character and they are soluble in ethanol so both of these have covalent character and are soluble in ethanol this you'll be using it in the lab also as a, uh, the solvent right so when i have to speak about hydrides what what does this concept of hydride mean basically lithium chloride and magnesium chloride they are deliquescent in nature what are deliquescent when you leave the salt outside they're going to absorb moisture right why do they absorb moisture okay when they absorb moisture what happens lithium chloride it's going to absorb moisture and form a hydrate lithium dot 2 h2 this is water of crystallization of lithium chloride when i have to speak about magnesium chloride this also absorbs moisture and it forms lithium chloride as magnesium chloride 8 octahydrate that means because of that water of crystallization we call because of the absorption of water we call them as deliquescent salts so these are the quite common or the similarities between lithium and magnesium let us come back and see the anomalies of lithium compared to this and others right so first i've taught you why is lithium uh, showing anomalous property compared to other elements of alkali metals right then i taught you uh, like the similarities between lithium and magnesium the diagonal relationship now i'm going to teach you how like uh, what are the properties which uh, like particularly differentiate lithium with other alkali metals so i picked up lithium as a heading and this is uh, now specifically i'll be explaining sodium magnesium potassium rubidium right so let us see the comparison now when i have to speak about uh, lithium uh, the melting point and boiling point because of the size is very small lithium size is very small and the ionization enthalpy is very high as i said the so melting point and boiling point are very high right compared to alkali metals alkali metals are a bit lower than this right next one when i have to speak about the physical state <clears throat> physical state lithium is very hard in nature and alkali metals you can cut with a knife isn't it we already studied that they are a bit soft metals that when i have to speak about reaction with oxygen right so uh, lithium reacts with oxygen to form a normal oxide like li2o right so what do they form they're going to form normal oxides of type 
Li2O. When it comes to other uh, alkali metals, these alkali metals also react with oxygen, but other than the normal oxides, they're going to form peroxides and superoxides. Peroxides and superoxides. Right now, when I have to speak about nitrogen reaction, specifically, the uh, lithium reacts with nitrogen to form lithium nitride. I already showed you the reaction. Lithium combines with nitrogen to form LiN. The valency of nitrogen is three. Lithium valency is plus one. Here, nitrogen is two. Correct. So you're going to write two. Balance it. Now lithium have become 6, so 6, specifically nitrogen combines with this one, lithium combines with nitrogen, these will not combine. Now when I have to speak about the carbonates, now lithium combines with carbon dioxide or if I have to speak lithium forms carbonate, isn't it? That is lithium carbonate Li2CO3, why did I write Li2CO3 carbonate valency is 2, lithium valency is plus 1. Thus, when you are heating it, it further decomposes, carbonates decompose, hydroxides decompose, means they will break up into two or more compounds. How does it break up into? Lithium carbonate breaks up into Li2O. Carbonate forms carbon dioxide. CO2 plus 1 becomes CO3, Li2 becomes Li2. But here, when I speak about the alkali metals carbonates, they will not decompose on heating. Remember, do not decompose on heating right yes now when I have to speak about hydrates I already said what a hydrate when do the hydrates form because as I said lithium chloride magnesium chloride all these are deliquescent they try to absorb moisture when kept open right so because of this lithium forms a hydride combining with water called lithium chloride dot 2 h2o this is a hydrate form of lithium but when I have to speak about other alkali metals they are not deliquescent so what is the property here they are deliquescent in nature they're going to absorb moisture here they are not deliquescent in nature they're not deliquescent in nature right after the explanation of lithium let us see one question which is very important uh, but related to your lithium now what do they give us here lithium does not resemble with other alkali metals in the following properties okay just now we have studied this resemblances of lithium with other with alkali metals uh, dissimilarities of lithium with other alkali metals also right they're asking us which lithium does not resemble with lithium does not resemble with other alkali metals in the following property it does not resemble this set okay dissimilarities they're asking us here they've given us first point Li2CO3 decomposes into oxide with other carbonates and is soluble we have already studied lithium carbonate decomposes into that lithium oxide and carbon dioxide okay so this statement is correct correct so the which does not resemble means this only decomposes alkali metal carbonates will not decompose so the answer also is a okay right next one LiCl is predominantly covalent in nature that's perfect it is predominantly covalent in nature yes so B option also is correct third one Li3N is stable enough right so we have already studied it uh, uh, when on uh, uh, heating it decomposes also so forming combines with nitrogen forming Li3N which is stable that is also correct but now here LiCl is conducting in molten state wrong isn't it we said LiCl magnesium chloride and lithium chloride both are covalent in nature I said so covalent they will not conduct correct unless until it is ionic they will not conduct so they are both LiCl as well as co uh, the molten state are uh, in molten state means uh, con they are conducting in molten state that's wrong isn't it they are covalent in nature so they will not conduct so we have got three answers for this Ma'am, what is this we have got three answers there are certain questions which have more than one option also right so here in this case A, B, C all the three they does not resemble with alkali metals the fourth one it presents so ABC is the answer right. let us see one more uh, question which is related to lithium here what do they give us <clears throat> identify the element X of the following right let's see this the reaction between metal X and water is quite slow okay uh, basically when I taught you uh, in alkali metals that is about lithium and magnesium I said they're going to f they're deliquescent as well as they form uh, they hydrate into a complex that is LiCl2H2O and magnesium chloride 8H2 this is what I told you right so okay I have not I, I didn't have any clue about this let's come back and see one 
one more question. They said X is a reactive metal which forms three ionic oxides with composition X2O, XO2 and X2O2. Okay, they are forming oxides and peroxides. Right. So, uh, like, uh, you have to be very careful. What did I say? Compared to lithium and other metal, other alkali metals, they form uh, oxides and this peroxides and superoxides. I told this, isn't it? So, what are the other elements of the so alkali metals which form peroxides and superoxides? That is nothing but your potassium, rubidium and cesium. So, the element X here is potassium, rubidium and cesium. This is the answer for this. Now, suppose if I have to take this one. X is the most abundant element of group 1, I said. So, among all the elements, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, which is the abundant element which is present in group 1? That is nothing but sodium, isn't it? Okay, this is an answer. Now, when I have to speak about the chemistry of X resembles magnesium, right? We have already studied. Lithium shows diagonal relationship with magnesium. So, what will be that X here? X will be lithium. So, even the first answer, the reaction of metal, which will form a hydrate complex, also is lithium. So, this is how you are going to differentiate and analyze the question and write the answer. Right. So, one more question about your lithium chloride and basically alkali metal. Let's see this. Very interesting question. What do they give us? Among LiCl, RbCl, BeCl2 and magnesium chloride, both alkali metals and alkaline earth metals, the compounds which has greatest and least ionic character. So, how do I decide this? When an ionic character question is given to you, directly your concentration should go into the concept that is Fajan's rule. Remember that. What is this Fajan's rule? What does it say? We have studied this Fajan's rule. You should remember, according to Fajan's rule, higher is the ionic size that means the cationic size is larger the uh, ionic character would be more that is what is Pajan's rule yes the dragging tendency so among this okay what did we see higher is a ionic size means the size of the ion cation should be larger hence would be higher ionic character Okay, in the reverse order, if I have to say, if the ionic size is small, smaller, the uh, means indirectly they are covalent in nature, right? So covalent, uh, like the lesser side end of that. That means uh, if the ionic size is smaller, the ionic character also will be lesser. Now, what do they ask me? Which has the greatest and the least ionic character? Now I have combinations here. Now see here. Now lithium, lithium chloride is a covalent character, covalent compound, isn't it? So ruled out. This combination is ruled out. Now when I have to compare this, these two, and I have one more combination, RbCl and BeCl2. Here I have combination Rb and this one. Here I'm ruling this out. Why? We already said they are covalent compounds. Ionic as well as covalent compound also so this composition or this combination is ruled out so I have option between these two now I said according to Fajan's rule higher is the ionic size higher is the ionic character so among this magnesium compare beryllium and magnesium sorry beryllium and rubidium which has higher uh, ionic size rubidium has cat higher uh, cationic size because when I go down the group the atomic size increases ionic radius also increases so when I go down the ionic radio ionic size of rubidium chloride is maximum more isn't it so what will happen rbcl larger the cationic size higher is the ionic character so which is the greatest so rbcl has greatest ionic character according to fajan's rule right when the this is greater again the other way around smaller the ionic size smaller is the ionic character so which will have least the combination salt that is beryllium chloride has least ionic character this is how we are going to rule it out and correct the option so the correct option is c